This conference will now be recorded. So before we start, I'd like to you know, uh, go through the content that uh, we're going to discuss today. Okay. Since uh, what we're going to do today is just to try to understand the components of hyperloid fabric. Uh, before uh, we get into that, I my expectation is that uh, the people uh, who are joining this webinar has at least a minimum exposure or at least heard the name blockchain somewhere. Uh, have some understanding of like the, the you know, terms like Bitcoin and all distributed computing, etc. So uh, I will give a small introduction about blockchain, how it works, and then we will uh, move to Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, I'll introduce what is Hyperledger Fabric, how, uh, what are the projects in it, what are the components of Hyperledger Fabric, and uh, I'll also uh, introduce some of the tools that is used in Hyperledger Fabric. Some will also discuss certain use cases that is uh, that you can achieve uh, through the hyperledger fabric and uh, and we'll spend uh, some time in uh, qa um, for the to avoid uh, unnecessary uh, audio issues uh, i'll take the questions from the chat window so please post your queries in the chat uh, once we move to the <coughs> qa section uh, I'll uh, address as much as when we have enough time. So if you have uh, more queries, uh, please drop a mail to info.rapidcube.com. Uh, so I'll be able to address your queries as well. So once we complete this uh, webinar, uh, please do send your feedbacks. Uh, I'll, I'll forward you the link to send your feedback as well. So until then, I'd like uh, no, the audience to uh, remain in mute uh, in order to uh, have the presentation clean. Okay. <clears throat> so we still have a few minutes time. Let's see. Let's wait for uh, people who who want to join. Okay, I think we were almost time. Uh, let's start with the presentation. So, uh, to before I start, I'll give an introduction about uh, who I am and uh, what is RapidQ. Uh, my name is Omar Shankar. I'm heading the development uh, team here in RapidQ. I'm the chief technical architect as well. I've been working in uh, IT industry since last uh, ten years at least, and uh, particularly on blockchain in the last couple of years. So, uh, since we started. Uh, <coughs> Working on uh, working on the blockchain platforms, I've explored many uh, platforms like Ethereum, Hyperledger Fabric, NEM, 
iota and uh, quorums multi chain so these are some of the uh, blockchain platforms that i worked on and um, uh, so we are a company called rapid cube we are a startup uh, our uh, primary focus is on hyperledger fabric we started uh, exactly two years uh, before the state almost we are completing our second year and uh, our primary focus is on the technologies like blockchain machine learning iot and any disruptive technology that's going to <clears throat> make disruption in the market so that's uh, pretty much an introduction uh, so let's move on to the topics that i'm going to cover today so <clears throat> So before we get into hyperledger fabric, I I would like to spend a few minutes, uh, probably five to ten minutes, on what is blockchain at first place. Uh, and why why is there so much fuss about blockchain? What is what is something different that is not there earlier? What what exactly is a blockchain? Is it something uh, some strange secret stuff? Or uh, let, let's open up the let's put some light on blockchain, understand what is blockchain, and then we'll go to what is hyperledger fabric. So what is the difference? What is a blockchain and what is a hyperledger fabric? Let's see the difference between, or what what do you mean by hyperledger fabric, and 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 also we'll also try to discuss about other types of blockchain and what are the platforms available and how things are done uh, in the market, so things like that. Okay. So what we're going to uh, discuss today is number one, I'm going to introduce introduce you to uh, blockchain, basic concepts of blockchain. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the traditional approach, how it has been done till now, and how blockchain has um, changed this approach, and what is the approach blockchain takes. And uh, I'm also going to discuss how the blockchain works. So once we have an understanding of how a blockchain works, we'll get into a uh, deeper understanding of how specifically hyperledger fabric works. So once we have uh, some understanding on hyperledger fabric, we'll close the session by discussing few uh, use cases and a uh, few tools, and then we'll have a QA, and then we'll close the session. So we have uh, exactly an hour, uh, so we'll try to uh, cover as much as possible. Uh, please do use the chat window for any queries you have. Uh, we'll have a separate time at the end for questions as well. All right. So to start with, I wanted to talk about the traditional systems. Like, so how I, I hope like everyone is somewhere or other uh, part of an IT industry might have executed few projects. I've worked on few projects, delivered uh, you know different uh, domains. So if you look into those domains, look into those applications, you will see how the architecture works in the background. Okay, so every application that runs stood in the today's world is primarily a centralized applications so there is an application running in a server or in a cloud or somewhere and there will be a list of users or some other systems that actually connects to this system which is a centralized system uh, the decentralized systems exist uh, you know since long back it does exist but most of the cases it's only for a backup or to reduce the load so primarily even the decentralized system is part of a centralized system Okay, there is no uh, no decentral system that is actually works autonomously. So, so this is how basically a, a, any uh, projects or any software that runs today or uh, that's been running traditionally. Mm -hmm. So I've I've I've, I've uh, put a picture that you uh, know shows how it actually runs. Say for example, uh, you are you have a bank account in a particular bank. So what happens is your all your transactions, all your banking details, your name, your balance, everything is actually maintained in a centralized system, and uh, that particular system has a number of users. And uh, if you go to another bank from say from SBI or going to some bank of Baroda, then you have to repeat the entire process there, and that is a totally entirely a different system which actually does the same job. Okay. So that is how it is uh, in today's world. Okay, so that is how it's being built because that is how we matured to build. Okay, so the next level is to bring the common or bring the common functionalities. Are there, there there are certain information that actually can be shared. There are certain information that that actually has to be run autonomous without anybody's interruption. Okay, so let's also talk about those problems that exist 
and let's see how blockchain tries to solve it. All right. So the biggest problem in the previous image which we saw is these centralized systems is not connected to each other. So they are they work independently. So what is the problem in working independently? Is it is it is it not safe or is it, why is it why it should not operate independently? The reason it should not operate independently is because that opens up the way to support somebody to actually misuse the system. So for I'll give you a classic example. For example, you have you want a loan. One of the user wants to buy a loan from a bank, and uh, he has certain documents that he can uh, get a loan against those documents. So what an user can do, he can simply create an another user. A virtual user and he can fake those documents and he can submit the same documents to both the institutions and he can avail a loan however there are certain checks and balances which they do again that is also an another centralized on top of these two centralized system where they do the checks and balances and that's a very long process it is not real time so that is how there are so many fraud cases that is happening in almost every industry be it banking be it insurance be it healthcare Okay, the problem is there is a double spending. There are duplicates of records existing in all the systems because these systems are not connected to each other and they're, they're completely unaware of what is happening in the other side. Okay, here you can see there's a red user which is known by the same user. He has two existence, whereas he's actually one single person. Okay, this is, this is one big problem that actually blockchain tries to solve. Okay. So how blockchain works is simple. It, it, it connects all the system in a single network where this network itself will operate, where there won't be a centralized authority who controls the system. Instead, it is a, a computer program, a, a mechanism that actually governs this entire network. So basically, now if you see all these users who were previously uh, you know, part of a particular system, now they're part of a network. So even though system centralized system now is also a part of network. So basically, we are not replacing the existing old traditional system. We instead we are including those systems inside a network. So that is exactly what blockchain tries to do. So it's also interesting to know, no, to know that okay, now we are building a network and it all connects to each other. It talks to each other. It's all fine, but how does it really works? Okay. I mean, what makes you say that, okay, it's very uh, uh, secure and how you you claim that it is hacker proof, hack, hacking proof, etc. Okay, let's see uh, how actually it works internally as well uh, in coming slides. All right, so before we, we get into how it works, I wanted to explain uh, what is a peer to peer network. Okay, uh, I'm sure you all have might have used the uh, peer to peer network somewhere in your life most probably for downloading your movies in olden days okay before this amazon prime or netflix came into existence all your movies we used we used the peer-to-peer -peer network that is nothing but your torrents so basically a torrent is a peer-to-peer -peer network there is no centralized server where this information resides it actually resides from in your own system and you download it from another user someone exactly like you so peer to peer system works exactly like that. There are systems that is not owned by somebody, it's actually shared by everybody. So the content which lies in the peer to peer system is actually distributed across many users and you will be able to download or upload stream this uh, information from one peer to another peer. So what happens in, uh, in, in a blockchain scenario is the data is instead of actually maintained in a centralized system, so what happens is this data is actually distributed so a same copy of data whatever you wanted to store is actually distributed in multiple copies and each copies are actually a physical copy that resides in a particular node and i say node it is nothing but a it could be a simple computer or it could be a cloud instance or any so storage device even an order node could be or even an iot device could be a node as long as it has some storage to it right so now this systems and this this blocks of information is actually distributed across people so why we have to do that so that is how we actually 
uh, eliminate the or, or the other so we are creating the tamper proof uh, record systems so what happens when when, you, when i say tamper proof systems uh, when there is a distribution of data that has already happened like i and all the four guys in this network has the same copy of data if i try to change some data in the network what happens is immediately this interconnected network identifies there is one change uh, which has happened in a particular node is different from all other nodes so there, there there is something called a consensus which means that every other node has to agree for any change that is happening in the network so when then agreement is arrived then the change happens in every node or that particular change is actually rejected on the node so blockchain as you see uh, it is only an append only data which means that you actually cannot change any data but instead you will write a data on top of it so that is why it is called a blockchain so these data is stored in the blocks and it's stored in a chain and it uses a technique called hashing in order to connect these blocks so that is pretty much i wanted to tell you about blockchain uh, if i have to explain even more detail about how bitcoin works what is hashing it's that itself is a separate uh, uh, webinar so uh, let's move into hyperledger fabric and let's try to understand blockchain in uh, hyperledger fabrics perspective all right so before i uh, move into hyperledger fabric um, i hope everyone have, have some understanding what is a blockchain so uh, in a nutshell i would say blockchain is simply a, a storage technique uh, it is stored in multiple uh, nodes and it is distributed across people and all these nodes are interconnected and every time there is a data is added to this network and every all other nodes in the network has to agree to it so that's basically the technique of how a blockchain works so let's see how hyperledger handles this uh, particular technique and what is the difference or what is what is uh, special about hyperledger fabric all right so before uh, we go into hyperledger fabric uh, let me give you an a uh, small history about what is hyperledger in first place <clears throat> so hyperledger fabric is a one of the projects that is from hyperledger so hyperledger itself is a number of project um, that is actually now run by uh, the linux foundation uh, by the linux walls uh, linux foundation is one of a very popular open source community and they have taken up the hyperledger fabric as one of the projects so hyperledger itself is only a specification it is not a project and there are multiple implementation of hyperledger so fabric is one of the implementation so similar to fabric there are many other blockchains like iroha there is a sar tooth lake and like many other projects are there in the hyperledger fabric and they are continuously uh, building these projects and they are also adding few more implementations of hyperledger so fabric is one of the most popular implementation of hyperledger specifications Mm, fabric was initially started by ibm and then they gave uh, and they believed okay this particular project has potential for the whole, whole world to contribute so they gave it to the open source community and open source community has agreed to, to do that and that is how it has been evolved uh, the recent version is 1.3 uh, i have started working on fabric when it was 0.5 and there was 0.6 and then 1.1 and now there's 1.2 and 3 okay so over the course of time there are many things that has changed and it is still not a uh, no, complete project there are so many changes still happening in the background additional features that has been added and uh, so that is how a uh, nipology fabric is being built right <clears throat> okay so uh, before i get into apple's fabric i wanted to uh, give an overview of other uh, blockchains as well okay so one of the most popular blockchain you all might have heard is a bitcoin okay bitcoin uses blockchain whereas bitcoin itself is not a blockchain okay blockchain is the underlying technology which bitcoin uses whereas bitcoin itself is an application uh, which is not a platform means uh, it can only be used for a bitcoin transaction you can send or receive bitcoin from one person to another person and nothing else nothing more uh, the next uh, evolution in the blockchain world is the ethereum uh, ethereum actually opens up the world of uh, blockchain so what they did is they used the same prototype what uh, bitcoin used but instead they created a space where someone can write their business logic into it so all kind of transaction is possible in uh, ethereum 
means you can build your own application uh, which has its own use cases it, it has its own business uh, uh, constraints that needs to be addressed uh, so like uh, to give an example you can build an application that would uh, for which you can build an voting application for your government or you can do an ownership transfer say for example your cars uh, you can do uh, any log based system anything that you want to track okay your supply chain so all these are very valid uh, use cases you can build using ethereum so the next uh, big blockchain is hyperledger fabric so the difference between ethereum and hyperledger fabric is uh, ethereum is is a, is a public blockchain means uh, there is no restriction over who can participate in this network it is something like an internet okay anybody can use internet in can get into internet and you know use the contents of the internet or upload your content to internet there is no restriction at all right and ethereum also allows you to write your own business uh, uh, logics that is called a smart smart contract and you can within the smart contract you can define who can participate uh, or execute a transaction against the smart contract that is a level of uh, uh, control you can build in ethereum uh, whereas hyperledger fabric is a private permission blockchain uh, primarily it is built for the uh, for the industries or the enterprise applications uh, where there is a requirement that only the participants of the network has to participate like um, for example i am building an institution and i have multiple uh, branches of my institution i want these branches to be connected to a network then i can do that without anybody else uh, getting participated in the network so that is what um, uh, that is what uh, hyperledger is being built for it does not has any uh, cryptocurrencies like uh, ether or bitcoin it is purely an application uh, platform where you can build your own business application and uh, to, for anyone to participate in the network there has to be uh, permissioned as and they have to given right access levels in order to either read or write in the blockchain so that is uh, exactly what uh, hyperledger fabric is so hyperledger fabric falls under the permission private blockchain so let's try to understand more about the components of hyperledger fabric with an example right, right. okay so now i've uh, used an uh, supply chain uh, example to illustrate how hyperledger fabric works so let's take an example here i have uh, put up a winery called a cv winery uh, it exists something like that but in our case let's say it is an imaginary winery that exists somewhere in chennai and uh, there is a regulatory uh, so for every wine bottle they produce these people actually do the quality check and they approve yeah this can be uh, sold in the market and uh, there are two customers for the winery Uh, let's say there is a bar or restaurant called OK, and there is another uh, restaurant called uh, TGIF. Okay, so there are two customers for this winery, and uh, this OK restaurant is something which actually is a, a regular customer for winery. They have a continuous uh, business with uh, this winery, whereas uh, TGIF does not has a regular business. They have a demand-based business, which means that they might <laughs> they might walk by uh, wines whenever. they want so this is the kind of you uh, know business network uh, a simplest form of business network a huge supply supply chain would have a lot of more uh, participants uh, in the network uh, like there could be an insurance company there could be a bank there could be a uh, a logistics company uh, there could be multiple suppliers and there could be suppliers suppliers there's a manufacturer there could be a retailers and, and there is no potentially uh, there is no you know defined uh, size or number of participants actually can exist okay that depends on business to business and hyperledger fabric is specifically built to address all these problems the one thing what we can see here is that there is more than one participant and they do have to have a kind of a, you know uh, uh, some understanding between them there has to be a, some transaction has to be open among all the participant for example if a customer wants to buy wine he wants to make sure this wine is actually uh, the number of years it is old as it mentions in the bottle 
let's say the bottle says it's 25 years old and there is actually no proof except the label that is on the bo bottle as of now so so in order to ensure that is actually uh, old wine so there has to be a transaction log somewhere written and that log has to be uh, you know agreed or the log has to be trusted Okay, so Hypolyser Fabric actually solves these problems. Okay, it helps you track system. It helps you uh, create an identity for an uh, asset. And it also helps you do transaction over this asset and it also open uh, to everybody. At the same time, uh, it also offers some level of security or some level of confidentiality in the network. So let's see how it actually is. We try to build a uh, network for this uh, scenario. All right. So the problem statement is this. Okay, I have put up four points. Number one, <clears throat> the winery has to do a deal with uh, these customers. Okay, there are two customers for, that we uh, discussed. Okay, so when they try to sell their wine uh, to these customers, they actually wanted uh, some level of confidentiality. Confidentiality has to be maintained. Uh, for example, I might I might give my wines to different rates to different customers because one of the customer is a regular uh, buyer from me so i would like to offer him a lower price than the other one who comes only when there is a demand so when i offer different rates to different people i don't want that to be in a public uh, space where everyone can see then that will actually create problem in my business so that is one problem that i need to have certain information that has to be confidential among my business partners, number one. Uh, number two, these customers, when they want to buy this, uh, uh, their, this product, let's say wine, and they want to make sure that it is actually approved by somebody, and they also want to know when it was approved and who it is approved. Uh, so in order to know, uh, to make sure that they are not buying a fake product built by anybody. So that is the second uh, problem statement. and. Uh, Third problem statement is that they also want to make sure that the tracking happens properly, that when they bottle the seal on a particular day, there has to be some log that says, okay, this is the bottle and this is sealed on this particular date and nothing changed or it's not like faked or anything. So they there should not be like additional bottles that they brought in somewhere in the middle and in, on the play and say that it is an old bottle and they sell it for an higher price. The customer also wants to track the originality of this uh, product, where it has been done and how it is done. And at the last problem statement is like there. So when this, when tracking is happens, so they want this to be uh, very transparent and everybody in the network has to see that what is happening for each of the statement. So these are the problems that uh, that we are trying to address. And let's see how Hyperledger can help uh, solve all these problems okay yeah let's move on okay so <clears throat> the first thing how the data is being stored so all data is being stored in a key value pair in hyperledger fabric so when you say key value pair um, if you have worked in any database you will know the data is actually stored as a records in database and if you want to retrieve any uh, records you may have to write uh, sql queries uh, with a lot of joins and <coughs> sorting and all this stuff. Uh, whereas Hyperledger Fabric, it is not like that. Hyperledger Fabric is simple uh, transaction log. All the information that you can store in Hyperledger Fabric can be stored as a key value pair. In order to retrieve some data, you have to know the key of a particular data. So I've given an example of the bottle uh, and there is a key and then there's a value. So there, if you see the first line, there is a CV bottle 26112018. This is the key for the bottle. And there is a data. The entire JSON is the data. So this data, there is no potential limit how big this, this data can be. Uh, because it's a private blockchain, there is no uh, you can uh, you can manipulate this data in the way you want if it is a huge file. For example, you have a huge video file that costs like 10, 20 GB also, it can still be split based on the block size that you define and still can be stored. So the storage and retrieval is very simple, giving out the key and retrieval of the data. But the problem here is uh, you will not be able to query, uh, uh, do a complex queries that you can do as in a traditional database system. So you will have to maintain appropriate indexing. Um, 
and you have to build an appropriate uh, complex keys uh, in order to you know easily fetch and write data however these data is data are actually stored in a database within the peer nodes uh, so hyperledger fabric also gives opens up a way to actually do sql type querying as well uh, however that is not mostly recommended but still that can be done so well, now we understood how data is are actually stored so just remember this thing it is a key value pair All right so next thing is uh, there is something called a channel okay uh, so this is what uh, a differentiation that comes in uh, in a private permission blockchain for example there is a network and there are hundreds of people that they are participating in this particular business network and uh, there is definitely a need for someone to actually have a confidential information for example i want to ship some information or i'm shipping some product to somebody who's uh, who is somewhere in america and uh, i'm i'm giving a discount of 10% or 20% to that particular uh, my, of my customer so but in this uh, whole network there are many uh, participants like i my customer and there is a customs department that actually uh, takes or verifies my product and there is a shipping industry that actually carries my uh, product and there is a delivery they do that and within all these groups the discount 10% which i offer to my customer is something that is between me and my customers and and the shipping or the uh, customs department need not to know about that so that for that to achieve in a network like this you need to have something called a channel uh, so channel what channel enables you is you can do a confidential or you can build a sub network inside a huge network okay so uh, you can see that the uh, diagram there is a red color uh, triangle which represents that there is a small group within this whole big group so <clears throat> whatever data is being shared in this channel that is going to remain only within this channel that the other participants will not have an access to that particular data okay so that is what a channel is all about so just remember channel as a uh, sub network inside a big network all right the next most important thing is the ledger so as we saw earlier that every data is actually a key value pair and it is stored as a key value pair and i also mentioned that in blockchain it actually every data is stored as a sequence of blocks and you cannot edit a data and you can only append a data so i have given an example how it look like in an, in a in hyperledger fabric uh, you can see there is two bottles uh, that ends with 18 and ones with 17 um, and you can see multiple records for this bottle number 2 so there are 1 2 3 4 records for <coughs> uh, cv bottle 26112017 and there is only one record for <coughs> 2612018 so what what does this data actually represents here if you see this ledger this is how a ledger would look like in hyperledger fabric uh, so if you see this record there are two types of data uh, one is called the current world state and another one is an historical data okay the so world state represents the latest or the current data for a particular key and the historical data shows the previous transaction that is actually done on that particular key. So for example, uh, the second uh, record or the second bottle here, uh, CV bottle 26112017 has uh, three other previous transactions that has been done since it has been um, uh, created. So each transaction has timestamp, it also has a version and uh, let's say if you're doing some changes today it's going to add one more record for the same key so you can either fetch the current data to so see what is the today's status or you can it is also possible to query the history of that particular key and see what are all the changes that, that it has been gone through <clears throat> so in our case for the winery let's say i'm i'm creating or i'm selling a bottle today i will put a record for that bottle saying today is the date at that i have actually bottle this and i'm going to store it and i'll also mention where what is the size of the bottle and everything and then that will become one one and, and i'll say i am the current owner of this bottle and the next record would be there will be a, a regulator who comes in and he approves and he says he adds an another uh, uh, attribute to the data and says this particular bottle is now uh, verified and approved as per the standards 
So that happens on another date on different timestamp, and that also gets recorded in the same data, which is represented by the same key. And then later, it has been uh, let's say after five ten years, uh, they sell this uh, dead bottle to somebody, and uh, when they sell it to somebody in the network, and and again there has been entry in the same data, um, the owner of the bottle or the holder of the bottle uh, will be changed to the new owner, and that becomes another record. So for a particular bottle, you will see the entire history of the journey or the life cycle of the entire uh, bottle that can be tracked in the average of fabric so you can so this snapshot uh, gives you an idea of how the data is being stored and in order to drive so as you can see it is an ever growing record there is no way that you can delete or you know modify something uh, in in the hyperledger fabric all right so the third thing is the consensus that i want to tell you so till now we saw what is a, you understood how the data has been stored and we also saw how a ledger would look like we also saw <clears throat> what is a peer to peer network you know the the next important thing is the consensus okay what is a consensus uh, consensus is something that uh, a very essential element to a distributed system okay so when we are actually storing this information in a multiple systems and uh, we say that these are identical records, which means that if a record has a sequence of one, two, three, four, all these uh, copies of this record should also have the same sequence of one, two, three, four, and there should not be any change in different networks. So that that is very essential in order to create an immutable uh, records of data. So to achieve this, how, how how do you achieve this? Is only through the consensus. So what happens is every time when somebody uh, posts some transaction in the network, it is not directly written in a blockchain. It actually uh, distributed across the network, and uh, uh, every participant in the network agrees to it. And once everybody agrees and signs this transaction, then at the end, when there is an, uh, you know, everybody's uh, approval is received, then it is actually stored inside the blockchain as a last step. Okay. So if you see any other blockchains like Ethereum or uh, Bitcoin, they use a technique called uh, proof of work. But in most of the cases, it's a function that which actually gives you some some kind of result. So it's a single function call basically. Uh, it's, it's it's a technical consensus. I'm not talking about the application consensus where someone actually manually go and say approve click a button. No, it's not that. It is a this consensus is all about uh, how the data is being distributed and whether these nodes are aware that this data is actually being distributed and that is what it is. So. <clears throat> So whereas in hyperledger fabric it is not a single function it is a process uh, so this process involves three steps uh, hyperledger fabric has uh, step one is the endorsements step two is the ordering and step three is the commitment so when i say endorsement what happens is when somebody posts a transaction in a particular node a this data has been sent to all the pair nodes and every pair nodes puts their signature on top of the transaction uh, saying that yeah i agree to this transaction then it is again sent back to all the peers and then when they send back there there will be a different time delays from each peers that when the signature comes in so there is an order that takes care of the order in which the transaction being posted and when the ordering ordering is confirmed then it actually at the end as a last step it it adds to the blocks in the blockchain so this is this is this is exactly is what we call it as a consensus and uh, to achieve this consensus, there are many uh, techniques. Uh, proof of work is one. Uh, Ethereum uses proof of uh, work as well, and uh, they are moving to proof of stake. And hybrid is a fabric. Uh, I'm not getting into the details of what is proof of work, uh, but uh, I, I would like you guys to go and you know look into or uh, and try to read and learn what is proof of work. Uh, in case of hybrid is a fabric, uh, we use Kafka and use a system called PBFT, that is practical Byzantine fault tolerance system as a consensus. So what is PBFT? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just explain you in a little bit. <clears throat> Let's say there is a network of uh, 10 uh, pair nodes and they are to arrive to a consensus. Uh, so you can either define this network that all 10 network known systems basically has to agree. Okay. 
but there are some cases like some of the nodes may not agree or some of the nodes may behave uh, improperly or it may shut down it may not be able to respond so there could be certain cases like that where a consensus has to be arrived even though some of the nodes are not really or are, are working in a faulty manner okay so there is an algorithm that actually defines or handles the situation that is uh, pbft uh, pbft allows uh, a consensus can be arrived uh, when there is a 3f minus 1 uh, nodes agreeing to it which means like uh, out of uh, four nodes uh, at least three nodes agree to a transition then uh, we come to a consensus that's uh, in a very high level the principle of pbft so pbft enables or allows certain nodes to be to behave for in a quality manner and still we'll be able to arrive to a consensus right so so just an uh, rewind back just remember there is a data that is in, stored as a key value pair and there is something called a channel that allows you to create a sub network and there is a, a ledger where this data is actually stored and the fourth is a consensus uh, in consensus defines how this data is being distributed and agreed upon and uh, the last important con uh, uh, the component of hyperj fabric is the msp okay msp is the key differentiator here uh, for hyperj fabric okay so msp enables the network to be permissioned okay so when we are creating a private network uh, there is a need that we have to configure who are all can be the participant and who can we read a certain document who can write certain transaction so there is a, some place where we have to define all this information so so msp is nothing but the membership service provider of the network uh, this is one of the configuration node where you will have to define your network for example how many organizations are going to be there what is the branches that each organization is going to have and who are all the participants of the organization and MSP uses these certificates in order to enable these these peers to communicate to each other. So it uses the X point out many certificates, uh, which is just the certificates that you would see in any um, websites when you see when you see HTTPS and in the browser you can see the green colored HTTPS appears. It's basically nothing but the certificate authority issued certificates. So same MSP does the same job here. So a network can have its own MSP. Uh, it, it, even MSP can also built in a distributed manner. But however, uh, in a private blockchain, you know the participant who is going to participate. So there is no need for MSP also to be distributed. So there can be a centralized MSP. And uh, MSP is the one who actually issues the certificates to each peer in order to participate. So without a consent from MSP, there is no way someone can actually participate in the applied certificate. So now that uh, we understood all the uh, components that Typology Fabric has, let's get into our own old example of Winery and see how we can build a network for that uh, Winery network, supply chain network. Okay. So as we discussed in the problem statement, we have we need uh, some transaction to be confidential, and we need uh, a transparency that all network has to participate and um, and this has to be very secure so this problem statement let's try to build a network where we can address all this problem so to build a network for this uh, we are going to create two uh, chain codes uh, i think i mentioned the smart contract term earlier so chain code is nothing but a smart contract uh, in hyperledger fabric it's just a, a term different otherwise <clears throat> chain code is where your business logic sits in okay so we're going to build two chain codes. One chain code will be a common chain code where some anybody in the network can query the details about the bottles or read the transaction of the bottles. Or the tracking of the particular information can be in one chain code. And there will be another chain code where, where the confidential information can be shared across. So there are two chain codes where uh, you can see the methods that you can write in each chain code. So there is one chain code. It has a code and invoice sharing. And there is another chain code which where you can query a bottle, query a, an update holder or update a transaction, etc. Okay, there are two chain codes. Uh, chain codes are nothing but your business logic that fits in blockchain. So when you say it sits in blockchain, even this business logic cannot be tampered. That is what it means. All right. So the next thing uh, we have uh, 
three channels that we are going to build okay uh, so i have differentiated the channels with the color code there is a, a red green and a blue uh, so each color represents a particular channel okay so there is a channel one uh, that is red that is between the winery and the uh, okay restaurant and another um, channel that we have uh, one for the again winery and another customer which is tgif and there is another channel that is common for all the participant in the node right so any transaction that is post posted in this particular channels only the participant of that channels will have access to that information right so there are uh, to enable this uh, for ipr fabric at least uh, there is a need for four uh, pairs to open running so since we have the participant number is also four we will we'll, we are good to go with the four pair nodes and uh, there is no limit that you can increase uh, these nodes into so as long as you can afford you can have any number of nodes the more number of nodes uh, the upon available uh, availability of the system is very high right so and you can the, the more the nodes you have the more faster you can retrieve the information as well uh, whereas uh, storing will still take time so that's how uh, you can understand right so so now you concluded there is two chain codes three channels and four pairs let's see or let's put together as a network here so the next diagram yeah so here i am going to show you this is how an entire network would look like uh, so there are uh, four participants here and each participant will access this network through an application here uh, that's in the blue color box okay uh, this four uh, nodes can sit in a cloud where everyone can access or these four peers can sit in any one of the rest one of the users uh, premises or each peers can actually owned by one of the en entities here okay there is no uh, real rules that says okay this is how it has to be it can be distributed in either way uh, for example let's say a couple of the nodes can sit in a cloud and a couple of the nodes can be sitting inside a in an office and still it can be connected towards connected with each other okay so there are four pairs as we mentioned earlier in the previous slide a uh, pair one pair two pair three and pair four and every time there is a transaction that is posted by any of the user you can see that each pair maintains uh, two to three uh, ledgers okay so there's a blue ledger there is a red ledger and there is a green ledger as we discussed uh, in the previous slide so the blue ledger indicates the common ledger which is the transactional information or the tracking information of the wine so when i create a bottle and when someone approves a bottle and when i sell this bottle and when someone buys the bottle and someone again sells this bottle to somebody else so all this information is going to be stored in the blue channel uh, which is actually if you, you can see that is common to everybody so everybody is part of that particular channel so everyone has that particular uh, ledger right and there is a red channel uh, you can see this red channel is only available for two peers because this is some information that they only to share for example the price for which i'm i'm selling the bottle and if there is any discount that i'm going to give for the bottle and what is the invoice that i'm generating against the bottle so this information is going to be shared only among those two people whom who have access to this particular channel for example peer 1 and peer 3 is agreed for uh red ledger or the red channel so this information is going to be stored only in those two channels okay the same as for the green as you can see the green is only available for uh, pair 1 and pair 2 okay so we can assume that uh, no pair 2 is actually owned by the uh, tgif and uh, pair 3 is owned by the uh, the ok restaurant and pair 1 is owned by the winery and pair 4 could be the regulatory and and you can see how the transaction actually distributed and actually stored physically in the system right so so pretty much i have covered the, the high level of how an ipolitzer fabric works how does it stores okay and also discuss a little bit technical technicality of of the ipolitzer fabric like what is the channel what is the consensus algorithm that it uses okay uh, so this is I, I hope this gives a pretty much a good idea about how hybrid fabric works right so i would recommend you guys to go ahead and read the uh, link that is the 
Hyperledger Fabric read the docs.io. Um, so it is the documentation from the Hyperledger Fabric and they have pretty good and detailed documentation. Um, so I, I would recommend you to go ahead and read uh, in detail. Um, or if you have any simple queries, that questions that you need to ask me, please uh, feel free to send a mail. <coughs> we'll also spend some time in uh, open questions in the session. Um, so if you want this presentation to be uh, sent, please drop a mail. Uh, we'll be able to forward this presentation as well. Um, I'll also be sending in feedback uh, link to you guys so you can send us the feedbacks right so let's move into uh, the tools that is available for you to develop uh, in case uh, any of your participants are developers um, you can use these tools in order to you know develop your application so one of the tool is the composer api uh, hyperledger composer is an abstraction layer on top of the hyperledger network uh, so without you to actually understanding what is uh, how to write a chain code, how to call a SDK. So Hyperledger Composer actually uh, abstracts uh, to another layer where it's easy for someone to build a POC kind of projects. Okay. So all you have to understand is what is an asset and now what is the transaction and you can simply or very easily create a, a network uh, in the Composer and can be demonstrated easily. However, in order to do a production level uh, application, you would still have to uh, learn how to do chain code and, and how the system works, how to do a, a deployment, uh, in, how to configure this uh, Docker and for the containers in different ways. And that you still have to do in, in case if you want to do a production level uh, application. And uh, <clears throat> another tool is uh, Fabric Explorer. Uh, Fabric Explorer is uh, another project or a tool that is created uh, by the um, Linux Foundation themselves. Uh, so basically, you can configure this explorer to your network and you can see what is happening in the network, like what are the number of peers in the network, what is the, what <coughs> what's the number of transactions that has been posted till now, what is the latest transaction. You can drill down to see what are the, the details of each transaction, like posted by whom or approved by how many peers and what is the data that is in that particular transaction and all those information along with the time step you can see in the explorer um, that is enough another uh, very useful tool and uh, third in third third is another project from the hyperledger that's cello uh, hyperledger cello is a is a network building tool it's an it's an uh, devops tool i would say uh, so it helps you to uh, create a swarm of network or cluster of network you can define the network you can define the participant you can deploy the, your chain code directly through this tool and you can even call the methods in your chain code through this tool and you can monitor how your uh, network um, is working so basically this is another uh, configurable tool which you can use it for your for rolling out your uh, uh, network however whatever tools i mentioned even hyperledger fabric still is undergoing a lot of changes in the background so you'll have to like get your and dirty in order to get it work done. So, so the, the good good uh, documentation for all these uh, tools are from themselves. Um, so that uh, they have sufficient documentation that created and they keep on updating that as well. So you can go through that and get to know more about this tool as well. Okay. So next thing we'll move on to the use cases. Okay, so I have listed down certain use cases here um so one of the very popular use cases i've listed down uh, one is the supply chain system another one is identity management you can use this in the capital market state finance uh voting voting would be like for every government voting or, or a private voting system uh, diamonds or the asset tracking basically and logistics air miles like these are some of the very common use cases that you can find for hybrid fabric However, if you want to know more about the use cases, uh, I also mentioned a link there in the notes. Um, when I share this slides, you can refer the notes where you can actually uh, see a link which has all the use cases that is actually uh, given by the Hyperledger fabric themselves. They have like hundreds of uh, use cases that they have created a repository of use cases basically. 
So we can you know go through and see where and all you can fit hyperizy fabric or make use of hyperizy fabric. Uh, so that link is available in the notes of this particular presentation. Um, now I think we have come to the end. Uh, thanks for listening to me. So let's spend some time on questions if you guys have anything. Um, so please post your questions in uh, in chat window so that I can answer. I see uh, some of the questions that people have already posted. Uh, I'll try to answer. There is a somebody called Bhimeshwar asked us to share the presentation. Yes, I would be sharing the presentation. And uh, uh, for us for that, you may have to uh, send send us a mail to info at And uh, yeah, so I'll, we'll also be sending you a feedback form. Uh, please do send the feedback form and mention your company or email and uh, details that has been requested in the feedback so that we will be able to send you the uh, presentation as well. Um, there is another question from Mr. Uh, Roshan James. So he asked me, how do I, how do I as a beginner go about learning this technology? Uh, I will tell you how I started. Okay, uh, there is enough guide that is uh, available in the document. Um, if you go to the Hyperledger Fabric, uh, read the docs uh, website, you can see. So I have given the link there in the reference that you can see that in the slide. You can just go, go to that uh, URL and uh, you can see there are uh, guides where they have step step by step instruction to actually build a simple network and how to do how the transaction works and everything. So most of the content that I presented here are basically the content I referred from this particular uh, URL. So I would recommend you to go about that. But if you have, if you have never worked on Hyperledger Fabric, I would recommend you to first uh, do some POCs on Ethereum because you will get a lot of content from website for Ethereum because Ethereum is an, an open network and there are so many people working on that. Uh, you will easily get to uh, know what is blockchain. You can easily understand what is blockchain. Then you can move to Hyperledger Fabric so that you will also understand the difference between these two and easily able to relate certain things as well. Okay, there is someone asked what on what basis the nodes are assigned is one of the question. Okay, uh, so see, this is a permission blockchain as I mentioned. Okay, so there is always somebody who actually uh, controls the business. So it is a business level agreement that how these nodes are being assigned. Okay, so so if 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 there is a network, let's say supply chain. Okay, uh, you cannot expect all the participants in the supply chain to have or to run the node. So in that cases, who can afford the infrastructure? For example, a manufacturer might be a big, big person in the network, and he might uh, not, uh, run most of the nodes, and he might distribute few nodes to other uh, participants who can actually run. So there is no defined logic that uh, these nodes has to be run by these people. It's only the trust that defines the node. So for example, I'm one of the participant. I don't want all the nodes to be run by other participant. I want to own my own node. Uh, you can give one of the nodes to be assigned to the particular participant. So the nodes are assigned based on the requirement of the participant. If the all participant agrees that one particular uh, body can govern all the nodes, it is absolutely possible for a single entity to maintain all the nodes of the network as well. Okay. All right. So there is the question about uh, the cost. Like, what will be the cost of managing data and Transaction or hyperledger compared to traditional database or data store. Okay, so the cost in terms of uh, in in terms of in terms of deployment and in terms of hosting, it is an infrastructure that cards will have because uh, hyperledger fabric is an open source, so there is no cost or licensing fee that you have to pay. However, uh, for you to run these nodes, you you have to have the infrastructure. Um, it is the same case with any other, uh, you know traditional database also you have to have the uh, license that you have to pay if it is a if it is it has a license cost associated associated with it whereas hyperledger fabric if you can host the network on your premise so you have to uh, you have to have the cost that you have to bear the cost of infrastructure or you can choose to host uh, this application in certain service uh, for example ibm 
is providing a cloud infrastructure but the cost is differs from you know based on your business and the size of network you want to choose so they have a sales team where you can contact them and they can give you an appropriate number based on your requirement so it, it differs from requirements and um, uh definitely the cost is going to be in a little bit higher side when it compared to a traditional database because the data is an appending database and it is it has to continuously grow and and it is not something it's going to remain in the same size it's 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 going to grow over a period of time and you have to have that kind of information there are certain mechanism where you can actually cut down or cut short certain data in over a period of time but again it is a technique that you may have to come up with um, you can you can archive the entire data somewhere and create a new hash or a reference of that data and you can start a new network from that so that's how you can manage some storage problem but nowadays that i don't think that's a big problem that you will address All right. So there is another question. Like uh, somebody is trying to deploy a fabric network on multiple machines, and uh, okay, so they couldn't find any good tutorial. Okay, this is one of the problem that most of the hybrid fabric um, uh, developers trying to solve. And um, so they have the example. They have given a Docker based solution which actually runs in a single system, but there is no example that actually helps you to create uh, networks in different machines. So uh, so for abi uh, i would recommend you to try the hyperledger cello uh, uh, it is one of the tool where you have to uh, where you can configure a swarm docker swarm you can say what are the peer uh, networks ips and you can mention and you can easily deploy your uh, network on in, on different meshes multiple meshes uh that is one of the easy way um or the better way i would say is you can you have to learn a little bit about the docker swarm or or kubernetes clusters and you can deploy your containers on the cluster so uh, if you have anybody who has some experience in kubernetes it's it, it should be a doable thing so you if you have any specific queries you can still mail me uh, i'll be able to respond back Okay, I see a lot of questions that is coming up. Uh, since we have uh, come to a close of the session, I will take a couple of questions, maybe. Um, okay, so there is a question that is posted by Ravi. Will there be any transaction which passes the endorsement node but fails in order and committing phase? Yes, that is possible. Okay, because it's a distributed system where information flows from one place to another place. Until these three steps are done together, it is not complete. So it, it's going to be a rejection. So if if there is an endorsement happens for all the transaction and half of the system fails to you know endorsement is not complete. So basically the ordering will happen in a single pair. So the chances of this particular you know scenario is very less. However, it is still possible. So that would be my answer. Um, please provide clear steps to set up on windows 10 pro okay uh, if you want to so, so primarily most of blockchains works very well in linux uh, environment uh, but in case if you want to run uh, the network on windows uh, you will have to have the docker uh, installed in your machine and uh, uh, in instead of doing the configuration in the command prompt you will have to use the docker's uh, command prompt so most of the commands that they mentioned like make uh, or uh, certain commands will not work in your command windows command prompt instead but it will work in that uh, <coughs> docker utility command prompt and uh, let's see yep uh, could you please speak about consensus process okay consensus is a little a pretty much a big topic okay for you to actually explain how the endorsement ordering and committing works uh, you imagine something like uh, endorsement is somebody uh, puts a signature in a circular and order is finally receiving the circular from everybody and putting it in a particular order the way in in which they actually signed along with that uh, date and time based on the date and time they signed 
they put it in sequence and then finally they say okay everyone has agreed checks that everyone has agreed on once the check is happened and they actually file this information so this is pretty much what this consensus is all about endorsement ordering and committing uh, to know more about uh, the consensus process uh, i would you to recommend go and read more about uh, what is to start with have learn about what is a hash cache and see what is proof of work because proof of work was not invented by bitcoin it was actually invented way back uh, by or for a system called hash cache in order to avoid spam mails and then bitcoin used it and uh, what please do read about what is the uh, why we need a uh, something called uh, proof of work proof of stake and uh, one of the ipl the pro project uses something called poet that is proof of elapsed time uh, and if you try to understand the difference between these uh, consensus you will be able to understand what this pbft is also and you will also be uh, able to understand why this particular consensus makes sense in this kind of network scenario as well um i hope uh, this in, this presentation was useful and then um, let's close the question as of now uh, please do share your feedbacks in the link that uh, we forward you uh, and uh, do send your mails or queries in the info@rapidcube.com thank you very much